Let's take this song once again. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness. Righteousness and hatred, wickedness. Therefore, God, God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Fellows, therefore, God, thy God, Almighty Father, that is great, great presence we have received today. Thank you also for knowing you so deep, for coming right inside you, that you give us honor, you give us anointing above our fellows. Thank you. For knowing Jesus. Thank you for Jesus being the captain of our salvation. The bishop of the church. Lord Jesus, we worship you. We bless you. Happy to learn under your feet. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, we began the message on handling crisis, managing crisis. We listened to the first message, winning attitude in times of crisis. And in that message, we stated that you should have it in your heart in times of trouble be it attack be it sickness or whatever it is that God knows about it before he came and is in control of it because you are his loving child Hence, be peaceful and look to him. Because he knows about it. And he's doing something about it. And then we said, number two, God did it. Think this way. Know it this way. God did it. He brought about the problem. Why? Because... You have sinned. You have done evil. And he wants to bring you back from sin. He wants to bring you back from evil to himself. And so he struck you so that you can wake up from your sleeping sin. 
and come back to and confess and receive forgiveness so that your walk with God should continue. That is why he did that which he did. If he did not mind 2,000 pigs to be lost just to regain a man, he will not mind how much money can be involved just to gain you or what crisis, what, whatever can be involved even if it means plucking your eye, cutting your leg, as far as eternal life is concerned. Now today, we are saying, the all-wise God allowed it. The Bible study of today is, the all-wise God allowed it. Can you say it? Say it again. God knows about it. God did it. God allowed it. Why did he allow it? Because of his wisdom. Because of his understanding. In the book of Romans, chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. This is talking about the depth of the wisdom of God. The depth of the understanding of God. The quantity, you cannot talk about it, of wisdom and knowledge. In fact, he is wisdom. He is understanding. Again, in the book of Jude. Jude, the next book to Revelation, which is only one chapter, verse 24 to 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior <laughs> because he must save us he applies very great wisdom upon our lives he allows things this allows things because he is bent on our salvation. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And let the children of God say, Amen. Amen. When trouble or crisis arises on your way and your life is affected, Yes, to win over such a problem or crisis is determined by the state of your heart. Your heart is the battlefield. To win or to be won over, to succeed or to fail, it is in your heart. To give up or to still stand on, to withdraw or to move forward, your heart is the seat. It is, of course, the determinant uh, faculty of your life, your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
Keep your soul well. Keep your thoughts. Keep your heart out of it are the issues of life. We have talked about the other two. Number one, God knows about it. Number two, God did it. And number three, God allowed it. Yes, we shall consider the third thought. God allowed it. The third truth. These are three truths. We have considered two. We are considering the third one. God allowed it. We are going to start with the life of Jesus and see what God allowed in the life of Jesus. What he passed through and how it ended with Jesus till now. What did Jesus pass through? How did it end with him? For Jesus is our example. He has shown us the way we should follow. He has given us the steps we should follow. I'm, so, I'm going to talk about the pains in the life of Jesus. Pains. He suffered pain. He suffered pain. But something you should know. We said, the other time we spoke, that was last week, that God did it because of your sin. But in case of Jesus and others that follow, there is no sin. So since there is no sin, but the thing happened, we say God allowed it. There is no sin. You checked your life. You did not find sin. So nothing was responsible for it in your life. There is no cause in yourself. Like in Job's case, he couldn't find anything. Even God himself testified to his righteousness. Then but why did this thing come from? God allowed it. I want you to say, the all-wise God allowed it. This God that you are serving is very wise. He makes all things to work for your good. He is looking for how to promote you. How to make life better for you. That is it. He wants to make you settled, strengthened. He wants to upgrade you. And in this life, you have seen that employers who want to upgrade a person sends that person to course it happens so in the government you go for a second study a third study or you go for a particular course why i want to have a reason to promote you above your fellows or we want to use you in a specialized way and because of that we want to allow you to go for a course that will make you a specialized man there is this is the thought i really thought because in my christian life i suffered great satanic attack attacks in dreams sometimes manifesting physical in fact i would sit in the pulpit and as though a mighty force was pushing me to, to the wall of the pulpit it's a great force and i know i'm sitting here under battle sometimes just walking 
great force would be set against my life. It, I thought that I was that nobody suffered in life from satanic attack like myself. In fact, I was having that thought because sometimes it's as if the thing is physical like this. But what sin in my life? No sin. Then I said, ah, God wants to train me in the ministry of deliverance. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, you have not sinned. He allowed that. Go and challenge him. In that way, he will be living a prayerful life. And that's how I was doing it. Because the attack was too much. If I entered a vehicle, all this commercial vehicle, it was station wagon in those days, I will go to the back and use something to cover my mouth. Prayer. Pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So that people should, people in the front should know, yeah, I need to do that because the force is much on me. You understand that? So, but the comfort in me is the Lord is training me. I am not in that condition that I have overpowered it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, I, I am senior. Every Satan knows that I am a senior man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, when you say something, Pastor, it happened like that. I say, is that a hey? Yes. Go ahead. This is how it does to me. I say, I've been trained for that. I understand. I can, I can handle you. Okay? I can counsel you well. I can direct you how to handle it. Because the Lord has trained me. So, it is in that I said, the all-wise God allowed it. Say it again. Other reasons. There are many other reasons why he can allow such things in your life. Now let's look at it in the life of Christ. In Hebrews chapter 7 verse Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26 the Bible says for such an high priest became us who is holy, blameless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. For such an high priest, talking about Jesus, the life of Jesus as a man with us on earth, there was no sin in him. The Bible says, he became a human being like us. And being found a human being, he was holy. He did not commit sin. He was harmless in anger or in malice or in what? He went to be hurting people. People were afraid of him because he would kill them. He would do it. No. He was completely harmless. Again, he was undefiled. No man defiled him. No man provoked him to doing evil. No man, he didn't learn a bad character from anybody. So he was undefiled. He was clean. Again, the Bible says of him, he was separate from sinners. He was not sitting in the seat of the, of the sinners. In the seat of the scornful. Walking in the ways of sinners. No. He was not close to any sinner to learn his ways again talking about Jesus he was, uh, he was separate from sinners he made himself higher than the heavens now you now see Jesus as a man had no sin in him but he suffered why why I'm saying this because you are following him. You have not seen sin in your life. But what you are seeing is suffering. What you are seeing is attack. You are seeing hatred from Satan. Hatred even from human beings. Human beings that have not seen you before. They look at you and they are looking at you with anger. You begin to wonder, where did you know me? 
as far as I'm concerned, we're knowing each other for the first time today. Why is, why are you looking at me with anger? Uh, uh, why God? Why is it so? Yes, you are born to face suffering. You are chosen to face suffering. What is it? Let's learn from Jesus on life. Let's learn from Him. The Scripture tells us emphatically that Jesus Christ had no sin and did not sin. He was righteous and holy. He suffered all the crises in his life because God allowed them to happen to him, not because he had sinned. God allowed them. This is a comfort to you, sister. Not because of your yesterday sins. Not because of your today sins. Not because God is protecting you from tomorrow's sin. Well, not necessarily. But not because of sin in your life. You are suffering. Wow. You are hated. Things are not working well. As if when it comes to your turn, it will not work. The machine does not work. What happened? When it was your time, they said there was no network. So there was network for everybody except me? That's the question that you are asking yourself. Now, the Bible says, in First Peter, chapter 2, verse 19 to 25. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 19 to 25. The Bible tells us here, saying, For what glory is it, if when ye be befitted, for your faults, ye, sh ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well, and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable unto God. Which means, this life that you are just being oppressed, for no reason. God likes it. God likes that type of life. This life that you have not done anything evil, but they're abusing you. God likes it. Everybody say, God likes it. Exactly. You have not done anything. Because it is after the pattern of the life of God's Son. It is after the pattern of the life of Jesus. And God likes it that you are putting your steps on the steps of Jesus. Yes. And it tells us this. God likes it. And in verse 20. For what glory is it if we ye be buffeted for your faults? Ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well, you do well, you have not offended, you didn't fail, but they failed you. You didn't tell lies, but they charged you with lies. Yes, ye take it patiently. That is how you should do it. Take the charge patiently. Which means, don't always be full of defending yourself don't it's not in all matters that you should be defending yourself although you didn't do it they are challenging you telling lies against you don't be too full of defending yourself if a man takes you to court to remove your 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 court and your inner garment give him the other also if he slaps you on this cheek, turn the other side. That's how God wants it. Be patient. Take it patiently. What your sister is doing is purposeful. Don't mind going to challenge her. Except the Holy Spirit tells you. Otherwise, the normal way is be patient and be peaceful. What your brothers are doing against you in the family they, are, they agreed together to do it to pain you God is aware 
God allows them to come and do that. He allows them. That's what he did. If he didn't allow them, you are too big for them. A child of God. You are too big for them to make noise like that before you. But he allowed them. Take it patiently. Be peaceful. Don't react. Don't show them the power you have. This is how God wants. Who has more power than God? Was Jesus not God on earth? Could he have allowed anybody to make noise? But he took it patiently. So, that is what the word of God is saying. For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. This is the reason why you were called to Christianity. You were called to the Christian ministry to be like Christ, who was buffeted, the suffering, but he did not react. He's, he has given us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin? Neither was any guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. He did not threaten people, I have power, I can call police for you, I can take you to court, I can do this. No, that's not what he, he, he did. That's not what he did. Rather, he said, God, you know how innocent I am. God, you know that what they are saying there is not correct. They want to blaspheme me, to spoil my name before people. And my name, what name do I have but to glorify you? I seek not my own glory. Handle that matter and let not your name, O oh Lord, be blasphemed. Put it over to God and be very peaceful. That is what the word of God is telling us. That's what Jesus suffered. Yes. Not because of any sin. No. Jesus was the most innocent person in the universe who lived a life of sorrow due to suffering. You think you are. No. Jesus is. The person that lives, that lived the most sorrowful life was Jesus. Because of the attitude of mankind to him. And these are people he created. These are people he created. So, it pained him. He suffered the most pain in his life above your own pain. This is what you should know. But examining the life of Jesus Christ. We see the man Jesus occupying the, he, the highest position of life among the human race because of his suffering. Suffering took Jesus to where he is. The course that Jesus undertook to take him to the position where he is now is the cause of suffering. So, if he that invites you to this cause is the greatest invitation, is to make you meaningful, to increase your rank among your brethren. If he allows you to come to this point, Job, God wanted to upgrade the life of Job. He wanted to double him up again in his interest. Hence, he sent him on course. The course was called suffering. Everybody say suffering. I don't know what you're suffering, whether you're in this course. So imagine, be sure, that's what the Bible says. Make sure you're not suffering because of your sin and evil. There's no reward. 
That one is the judgment of God already started on you. But if you are suffering because of this gospel, because of your righteousness, because you didn't do anything wrong, you are on course to greatness. Your life will be different. <laughs> Amen. Before God promoted me, He sent me through cause suffering. It was serious. Serious suffering. But because I have this winning attitude, I was not overcome. I overcame it. Because <laughs> I knew that good was coming ahead of me. And that I should drink the cup to the dregs of it. Drink the suffering. Drink all of it. Because I needed all the promotion that God was going to bring in my life. So, this is being told you now so that your own should be cheaper. Amen? Because in this end time, God wants to recruit people faster. He may not want to delay on them as he delayed on some of us. So, if I give you this, instead of abusing people when suffering comes, you frown in your face, carrying a stone. Let somebody come to my house, I will stone him. And be delaying your, yourself. You will relax. And you, you will reach your destination faster. Praise the Lord. And the number of years we took to spend in our own, your own will be fewer. Yeah. That's why you are learning this thing. Everybody say, thank you, pastor. I'm happy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. That is what the word of God is teaching us. Check the life of Jesus Christ. We we'll see this man, Jesus. This thing Perfecting in his life. In the book of Hebrews. Chapter 2. I read verse 10. Hebrews. Chapter 2. We read verse 10. For it became him. Suitable for him. For whom are all things. And by whom are all things. In bringing many sons unto glory, heaven, to make the captain of their salvation perfect. Through what? Through suffering. It pleased God to be able to graduate generals on earth and make them enter heaven to mix with angels. He saw the relevance of suffering. He made the, the captain of their salvation perfect for this war through suffering. Jesus came and suffered. That suffering was required to make us perfect and fit for heaven and eternal life. That suffering. Someone says, the king chooses his generals in the battlefield of suffering. Normally, a king will go to the war and watch the way people perform and pick those who perform best to come to be his generals. But now, our God chooses his generals in the battlefield of suffering. How much have you suffered for Jesus? When Jesus resurrected from the dead, when he came before his, his disciples, he showed them something. What did he show them? Yes. He, the palm pierced by the kneel of the enemy. The knee, I mean the knees. Of the enemy nails and then the side pierced by the spear of the enemy it said see I have won it is me I won 
So, how will you go to heaven and never show God a sign? When he showed you a sign of his victory and it came through suffering. He is also going to get people to himself who also have tested suffering of life. These are the people that are going to heaven. God has only one son that has never sinned, but he has never gotten a son that has never suffered. Why are you running away from suffering? Hey, my husband did this. Oh, my brother, my wife did this. There are people that their wives denied them relationship for years and they stood to it for Jesus. They will go and tell the testimony over there. There are people, armed robbers attacked them because they are using their wealth for God. They will go and tell the story over there when they reach heaven. What will you say? Jesus showed you his own, the captain of our salvation, made perfect through suffering. He came and said, see the reason why I am your leader. What will you go and show if you are running away from suffering? God allows suffering to come, although you have not done anything wrong. Is it not to give you testimony? Is it not so that you should not be ashamed of this lie? <laughs> A particular sister was telling us. He said, I hear people say, I want to go to village. I want to go to village. And this thing is disturbing her because she doesn't have a village. He it's, it's, it's disturbing me. I was born in the town. I, didn't, I don't have village. So people are going to village and I don't have village to go to. This is this disturbing me. Are you getting what I'm saying? But is village a good life? Is it a good place to be? People are running to town. But she needs a village so that she can also, because it has become a pride now. Everybody says, I have village, I'm going to my village. She doesn't have one. It's paining her. Whether you will take her to your village <laughs> and give her joy so people are suffering for jesus people are given testimony how they came out of it how god delivers them he delivered them from the fire he delivered from this from this persecution god saved me you have nothing god is giving you something he allowed that suffering manage it well it will give you testimony tomorrow i say it will give you testimony tomorrow you will not be ashamed Amen. when people are speaking you will raise up your hand and say i have testimony also Amen. hallelujah Amen. that's what god wants you to know yes understand the account of his suffering of the suffering of jesus in isaiah 53 isaiah 53 I read by his knowledge from verse 1 shall my all righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will I divide him verse 12 a portion with the great who had believed our report he shall divide us and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed he had put for he shall grow up before him, him as a tender plant numbered with a and as a root out of a dry ground and met he had no form for no comeliness and this when we shall see him, of Jesus, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. Despise he is despised and rejected, and rejected of men. For what reason? A man of sorrow. Why did and acquainted with grief. You know, there are people, hit as it were, it could be you. our faces from him. very well. He was despised. You and we well. him now. They show you sure where he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. sorrows. Yet, we you did esteem like him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was, oh, it could be a wife, for our disdaining a noble man, bruised as for our her, iniquity. Her husband. The chastisement of our peace man, was upon him. When you and with his stripes, we are healed. Man. All we in love in society. We have Your turned everyone man in society. to his own way. Where do you and look down on law, him? Or it could be a man. A very beautiful woman. The iniquity of us all. Accepted, he was oppressed. Respected in and community. he was afflicted. But the man yet disdaining that woman. not his man. Why? He is Jesus brought as a lamb to the slaughter. 
and as a sheep before her shearers of humanity. Dumb. So he opened, opened not, he was he rejected. He was taken from prison by humanity and from judgment. Great man. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off just out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my he people was, was his stricken. With grief. And he met his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his but death. pain of the because body because he had done no pain of the heart, neither pain was of human any rejection. deceit in his mouth. Pain of yes. frustration. It pleased the, the Lord. Pharisee to Did they have any other person to attack more than Jesus? He had put Jesus him was like a mark grief. Door. When they say, hey, hey look at him, run, 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 follow that side, follow that side. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his God. And the pleasure of the Lord shall Why prosper like that in his son. He shall see of the travail of his soul of and me. shall be satisfied. Despised of me. Full of griefs because of attitude of men towards him. What about even as he observed in them towards God? What even as he observed in them towards one another? Me. He endured false accusation. They counted that all he was doing was of the devil. And that he, he himself was against God. So God, God was against him. He was not in the will of God. That man is from the devil. It's not from God. False accusation. He suffered all this. Men did not appreciate him. You can imagine. Just see it yourself. Jesus healed a blind man born blind and his parents were not grateful the parents would not show him gratitude the parents would deny him glory because they feared the pharisees no they never came to greet jesus with the good work he did they never came to greet jesus this man that helped them this that this Jesus that helped them over their child that they are carrying to excreta. They are carrying his excreta. They are bathing him. They are doing this. Jesus helped you with your son. You cannot say thank you. So it's a grief. It's pain. Yeah, neither didn't appreciate him. He was wounded. He was bruised. Wounded. The wounds, when you see the way people treat you, it pains. How much more at the time of crucifixion? I'm, I, know, I don't know whether they had beaten any man like that. Demons joined them to beat Jesus, I suppose. They beat life. They wanted, it was by the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, by the beating Jesus received, he would have died there immediately he wouldn't have been able to carry the cross was he able he fell he wouldn't have been able to go to the cross that's where god the bible says he through the the holy the holy spirit gave himself for us it took the holy ghost to sustain jesus so he was able to go to the cross Considering the wounds they gave him by beating, by torture, forcing crown upon his head, he suffered. He was chastised. How many stripes? 39 stripes. And our sins, the weight of our sins were upon him. Or was upon him. The weight of our sins. So heavy. It was dark. He needed water to drink. Jesus he suffered a man of sorrow acquainted with grief a man of sorrow he was a, he was oppressed but practically oppressed not everything is inside the bible afflicted eventually they killed him they killed him and miss mockery if you are the son of God, bring down yourself. Then we will believe. It was waiting. And the thief on the cross, who was also dying, because he was a human being, like many human beings today, added his own. Added his own. 
If you are son of God, save yourself. Um, we're here with you now. And save me too. He was mocking and laughing to please human beings that were watching. And he was dying that day. Did Jesus suffer? And yet, see what the Bible says in verse 10. If you are there, let's read together. One, two, go. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Full stop. I'm saying God is interested in the suffering you're going to going through. Because after you have come out of it, there's so much you will achieve for him in among human beings. You will become the man that will work out the salvation of a race of people, a tribe of people, a nation of people. A people in a community you will be the one suitable for it because you have been trained God was interested in the suffering of Jesus everybody say it see the reason that God was interested in the suffering of Jesus see him yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. I'm going to forgive many people because of this thing you are passing through. My son. I am going to change the lives of many people because of this suffering you are passing through. My daughter. You know the devil and his angels left. The mansions of heaven, many are empty. I want to replace them. But these people are sinners. This suffering you are doing now, I'm interested in it. I al- not because of yourself. I allowed it. Why? It is by this suffering we shall bring people to inherit these mansions. Go on, my son. Take it. Stand firm. It shall not be forever. It shall finish. See it again. In verse 10. The Lord says. He had. He said. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall. He shall see his seed. Can you see it now? He's going to see the blessing. The people that shall rise up. Rise up here and there because of this suffering he's passing through. And he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. What that means? God is God is going to prolong him. God that the presence of Jesus among us is Jesus living among us. Because sin shall be forgiven, the Lord shall allow the earth to last more. The, the righteous shall last more upon this earth. Righteousness shall prolong more upon this earth before the total collapse will come. And righteousness shall continue forever after the millennial reign. Amen? More blessings. There are more, more interpretations to these things. Now, again, the Lord is saying. He said, And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. <laughs> Can you see? See me myself standing here. In the sufferings of my life. God is taking pleasure by me today. I worship him. I give glory to his name. I give honor to his name. I worship the God of heaven. Glory. Amen. I cannot recount, but some who know me would have known my suffering. How the Lord led me through it. Yes. And I remember when Jesus came, some of the years, a few years ago, I said, my son, more people are going to heaven now. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Oh, worship. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Thank you, Father. Oh. Bless God. What condition should God put you into that more people in your village will make it to heaven? Will you refuse that condition? What suffering should God give you that more people in this city can go to heaven? What condition should God put you into, allow into your life? What should Satan do by the allowance of God that will make more people in the world to enter heaven? You will willingly offer yourself. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. This suffering that you're thinking is passing through, don't bother. That's the father talking to people watching. This suffering you see my son passing through, he will come and thank me for it tomorrow. Because he will see the result of it tomorrow. The product of this is suffering. The quantity of people that shall be turned over to righteousness. Many that shall be that shall inherit everlasting life. He shall see people that shall sing and dance to embrace him. Darling Jesus. He will be tears of joy will come out of his eyes. He will forget his suffering. A woman in childbirth cries and is in pain. Until when a, a baby boy is born, it's ha ah, be peaceful. You have given birth to a baby boy. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world. That is it. The suffering, the thing that will come out of that your suffering is God that will tell. I have not seen, no ear heard. That is it. That's why God allowed it. Servant of God. If your father allowed it, it is in his perfect wisdom. If your father allows it, it shall work out for your good tomorrow. You have listened to that message already. Amen? Yes. You have listened to that message already. That if your father allowed this, it shall work out success, beauty for your life tomorrow. Again, let's continue. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Look at us now. Look at you. Look at me. Our names are in the book of life because Jesus suffered. We are grateful. I say we are grateful. Yes. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he had poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bear the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Satan here is called the great. Satan here is called the strong. And that Jesus is coming to share human beings with Satan. Otherwise, he has carried human beings to doom them. And Satan is great in evil. He is a strong man. But because of the suffering of Jesus, God was going to make him enter into Satan's kingdom and carry many out of it. Now, in this way, did Jesus overcome Satan as God or as a man? Answer me. In this way, the person that went to the cross 
Was he God or a man? This man Jesus, the man of Galilee. He went as the son of man. That is why he is representing not angels. Angels don't need to be represented before the devil. He is representing human beings. Because he took our form. He did it as our elder brother. He did it as, uh, he did it as the captain of our salvation. Human beings. Now, human beings has a right to win over Satan through suffering that's why when some battles are strong you are told go into suffering which means go into fasting some battles are strong you are dealing with the devil and sometimes the devil proves strong go into suffering there is going to be a generation by you a mighty power to break down the devil for Jesus, it is suffering he went into. Serious. That gave him victory over Satan. Can you understand that? So, the wisdom of God played over what he allowed to happen to Jesus Christ. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He wanted his soul. Yes. It, God, God took delight of it. He took delight of it. It pleased the Lord to allow him. So, why, if you call me Lord and Lord, Master and Lord, why don't you allow me to wash your feet? Why don't you allow me to allow things in your way according to my will? According to my love for you. Why are you full of murmuring? Why are you r hating people because of what I allow in your life? Why are you going into evil for what I allowed in your life? Things I know clearly that will work out salvation in your life. You don't do well. You cancel the handwritings of God in your life. You cancel it by your life. My people perish for lack of knowledge. If you had known that this thing happening was the handwriting of God for your promotion, you would have never, never stopped it, walk against it, run away. You wouldn't have done that. That's what God wants you to know. Christ's suffering, humiliation, humility, and complete obedience to God brought a high promotion to him that he now inherited the highest name. I still tell you that name Jesus is a human name. It's a human name. Made great and greatest all over the world. As for God, God is eternally greatest. Eternally greatest. In the form of God. But as a man now, when he, he took the form of man and became a human being, that name is a human name. Jesus, that he bore when he was with us. And because of suffering, that name is the highest name in the universe. Hallelujah. Everybody call me the greatest name on earth. Everybody call me the most powerful name on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody call me the wonder, the wonder walking name on earth. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody, everybody call me the name the devil fears on earth. Hey, glory. Glory, everybody, everybody call me the name angels respect on earth most. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. <laughs> that is the reason why I love him so much. Hey. 
I love him so much. Hey. Yes, I love the Lord. Sweetest name I know. Hey. That is the reason why I love Jesus. I love him so much. Oh, wash it. Jesus, blessed Jesus, I love thy name, thy holy name, hallelujah. Jesus, blessed Jesus, there is no other name. I say, I say, there is no other name. Jesus, Jesus, oh yeah, hallelujah, hey, I say, blessed Jesus, there is no other name, amen, my message will not finish today, <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Because I need to quickly finish with Jesus so that we're going to press it. But the one I am going to first next is pains in the life of the saints. <laughs> that one for next time. <laughs> Your name, your name will come out. Your situation will come out. You will know your promotion. You will know what God is planning for your life. But today, today, we'll just, we'll finish it on Jesus and worship Him. Go to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Wonderful. This is something good and great. Philippians chapter 2, I read verse 5 to verse 11. Yes. The Bible tells us, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God also had highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every name should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father now see it let this character be in you as in the man Jesus this man that you saw him as man was God in heaven eternally he was God living forever and ever in heaven and will live forever and ever for God doesn't die but this man Jesus is the humility of God you can see God reduced to man that man Jesus the greatest in honor angels are higher than men on earth in, in honor he is the greatest in honor in the universe yes this man Jesus 
is the most powerful in the universe. They ask God. This man Jesus is the most glorious, the richest person in the universe as God. But the Bible says he willingly removed these qualities of God and kept them aside and chose to become a human being that is lower than the angels. He became the humility of God. The humility of God. So those that humiliate him were those that humiliate God. Those that despise him are those that despise God. This man Jesus. Now that he became a babe. There was some, maybe they have started playing it around the world now for the Christmas uh, celebration. Uh, Mary has born his child today. He, Jesus is that child. Became a babe. Crying eh, eh, according to the rules of, uh, of, ba of babies. And they gave breast to him. He sucked it. <laughs> and this is all that he said in the universe. Humble it, this God. Humble to follow all process. No pride. No threatening. He never slapped his brother because uh, where, did you, where did you delay in giving me breast? No. <laughs> he threatened nobody. He's humbled. Did everything. When he's at for the man that adopted him, Joseph, was a carpenter. Jesus learned carpentry. You hear me? Yes. Human beings who don't want to be carpenters. We are looking for people to do work for us. They cannot join carpentry to go and learn it. Jesus learned carpentry. And I was told that in those days the carpenters would go to the bush, fell a tree and carry it to, the, to, uh, to their home to be able to make things for people. He was doing like that. You could be, you could buy chairs from Jesus. You hear? And they didn't know that this man doing this is the Creator God. Do you really know who God is yourself? Can you see who this God? That's the way you are proud. You are surprising God. You are surprised. That's not His nature. He did all this, and the Bible says, being found, being found. You look at what He said. He never met himself, he never shot at all at, that he is God. No, he didn't threaten with anybody here. Now, he said, being made, I mean, he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Okay. When Jesus sees or oh, so a senior person in age coming to pass by good evening sir some will answer some will not answer <laughs> are you hearing me you how would you have behaved you will answer or not answer you will answer him but some were not answering even as today some people when you greet them they don't answer the same human beings why they don't answer we don't know pride whatever you are not qualified to greet me you are not jesus suffered it he he, he humbled himself yes yeah, that is what happened to jesus and became obedient he became obedient to parents to the society to God in all righteous matters in all righteous matters he became obedient and uh, obedient and there is one, one thing people will not want to take to die for scarcely will a righteous man die die for a, for a righteous man would any dare to die for scarcely for a righteous man would any dare to die? That's even 
however righteous and good you have been doing to somebody ask him that they say they will kill you but that if you can find somebody they will kill that person and that you remain alive he said eh with all the money you have been spending on him you build house for him you bought cars for him so you say I want to say whether you will because you know I have more money to be giving to human beings so will you want to take over my position and die so that I can remain and be doing good the man says as for me I am not ready to die <laughs> I'm not ready to die now so bow he humbled himself even and became obedient to God even obedient to men too to the point that they were carrying him he followed them if Jesus wanted war civil war is very simple Peter was already ready for him and other people turned like that and said hey my people see <clears throat> crowd of people will gather fight people will be killing themselves but he submitted himself carrying me to go and kill me you see this Jesus even when Peter brought out a sword and cleared the ear of somebody he said wow can I not, am I not to suffer what my father has designated for me the cup that my father has given me to drink will I not drink it do you know the reward you only see the pain you don't see the reward I have seen the reward I have seen the result I have seen what will happen after me the Lord has made me to know it although there are still other things as a man I may not know but I know all things shall work for my good so he brought the ear and healed Marcus the, the servant of the high priest he healed that healed it up and oh, whom are you looking for Jesus okay look at me that's how they carried him this Jesus let your life be like his he became obedient even to the obedience of the cross that to the date of the cross that one is the worst that one you won't die immediately you will just be hanging like this and allow you to die slowly slowly your hands will become tired the blood will drain down to your feet gradually your feet will be swelling gradually until your veins will be filled with the blood until every strength will finish everything will go down and you have no air to breathe anymore the death of the cross he submitted to it. He submitted to it. So, and the Bible says, Wherefore, as a result, among men, God also highly exalted him, and given him a name, which is above every name. Because of this, therefore, because of this suffering, because of this obedience, because of this humiliation and humility, the Lord highly exalted him and gave him a name that you will need to stand up today in honor of that name to call it. You will need to stand up the greatest name in the universe. Hi. The greatest promotion in the universe. The Lord has planned this for you. That's why he allowed you to suffer. He's keeping quiet. When Jesus was crying on the cross, did God not see? My son, you know the promotion I have for you. I've discussed with you. Be bear it more. That's the way we can get these people now. That's the way your hand will reach there. That's the way you will reach that city. 
and redeem people. Now, he died. God raised him up the third day. Such a man, he has finished the work of a man. He has won fellow men to, to eternity. Glorify me with the glory I have with you from the beginning. But among men, a name is being left. Hmm. Demons will shake. Demons will fly. Sicknesses will vanish. Poverty will vanish. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. In the whole world, a name has been left. The greatest name in the universe. The greatest name among me. The greatest name in the world. The greatest name in Nigeria. The greatest name in Africa. The greatest name in Europe. The greatest name in Asia. The greatest name in America. The greatest name. Call that name. Call that name. Glory, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, that is the greatest name, is the superior name. Hallelujah! Glory, Jesus! Jesus! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, God! Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! Jesus! 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 Ha, 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 ha! Jesus, 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 the thing, the greatest thing in the universe, the greatest thing in the heaven above, the greatest thing on earth, glory to God. Every tongue shall confess him, every tongue shall confess him, every knee shall bow.
What manner of man is Jesus? I say, what manner of man is Jesus? What manner of man is Jesus? Wash it. What manner of man is Jesus? He is the Son of God. He walked up on the sea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say, what manner of man is Jesus? What manner of man is Jesus? What manner of man is Jesus? 
He walked upon the sea. He made the blind to see. He made the lepers walk. He made the blind to see. He made the dumb to see. What manner of man is Jesus? Worship him. Jesus is Alpha. Alpha Omega. Jesus is Alpha. Alpha Omega. Yes, I praise him for his Alpha. Alpha Omega. Oh, I praise him for his Alpha. Alpha. I say, Jesus is Alpha. Alpha Omega. Jesus is Alpha. Jesus is Omega. And we praise him for his Alpha. We praise him for his Omega. And we praise him for his Alpha. And we praise him for his Omega. Like Jesus, I want to be. To live forever. Like Jesus, I want to be. To live forever. So I praise him for his Alpha. Alpha Omega, so I praise him for his Alpha. Alpha, I say, Alpha, Alpha Omega, it's Alpha, Alpha Omega, and I praise him for his Alpha, and I praise him for his Omega, I praise him for his Alpha, Alpha. Oh yes, Jesus is Alpha, Jesus is Omega, Jesus is Alpha, Jesus is Omega, and I praise Him for His Alpha, and I praise Him for His Omega, and I praise Him for His Alpha, and I praise Him for His Omega. Like Jesus, we want to be. To live forever, like Jesus, we want to be. To live forever, so we praise Him for His Alpha, oh Alpha Omega. So we praise Him for His Alpha, <laughs> Alpha. Oh yeah, Jesus is Alpha. Jesus is Omega. Ah, Jesus is Alpha. Jesus is worship him. I praise him for his alpha. And I praise him for his omega. I praise him for his alpha. Love Jesus. Want to be like Jesus. Like Jesus, we want to be. To live forever. Like Jesus, I want to be. To live forever. So I praise him for his alpha. Alpha Omega, so I praise him for his Alpha. Ah, Alpha Omega. Jesus is Alpha. Jesus is Omega. Jesus is Alpha. Alpha Omega. And I praise him for his Alpha. I praise him for his Omega. And I praise him for his Alpha. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Worship him. He is only the one. Nobody like him. The man Jesus. The excellent Jesus. Excellent. 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 Oh yeah. Hey. Oh yes. Hey. Oh yes. Oh my. Jesus is Alpha, Jesus is Omega, I praise Him for His Alpha, I praise Him for His Omega, I praise Him for His Alpha, I praise Him for His Omega.